Hey, and welcome back in today's video. I'm going to share with you the biggest, hugest paper organizing mistakes that you're probably making and a few hacks to solve them. The first biggest organizing mistake that almost everyone is making is not keeping all of your important documents together in one place. What I mean by this isn't like your marriage certificate or things like that, but those emergency papers that you would use if like, you would need these if you're walking across the street and a bus just took you out. You're not dead. You're just unconscious and you're at the hospital and maybe you need your mother-in-law to come and help take care of the kids and she needs to know where the school is, what the phone numbers are, what time the bus drops them off. All of these type of important documents can be in a household management binder. This is one of my favorite organizing tools of all time. And it isn't something that you're going to use all the time, but it is something that you should have not only in the case of emergencies, but that's really important, but also because it can house all of those important documents that usually end up on your fridge. So you, the passwords that you use for your kids million different apps or the phone numbers that you access on a regular basis, maybe your takeout menus that you love, all the stuff that's on top of your fridge or shoved in a drawer can be stored in a household management binder. But the most important reason you want to use this is for emergencies. This is going to give you peace of mind and honestly, it can save a life. Here's why. If you are ever in a situation where you have to have emergency surgery or you're incapacitated, your spouse or your family can grab this. They'll know all the medication you're on, the dosage, your family history. But there's also places in here for your family's medical history. So maybe your mom or your dad also, you're their next of kin. They are incapacitated. You're going to have their information too. This is life-saving information. A pipe bursts in your ceiling and like everything's flooding, but you're on vacation. Whoever's taking care of your home, they'll have your insurance information, the policy number, and the number of your favorite handyman all in one place. Maybe you have a babysitter, all your kids' information, what their favorite meals are, what their allergies are, what their bedtime is, all in one place in your binder. This is why you need this because yes, it's going to organize you all those like scrap pieces of paper. And yes, it's going to put all those important documents in one place. But more than anything, it is about peace of mind. It's about being organized for an emergency. I keep this in my kitchen. I use it at least once a week. And this is a paper organizing tool you have to have. If the idea of making a household management binder like makes you happy, why stop there, friends? I also recommend a meal planning binder. So I have a huge binder planning system. I love my binder planning system, but the two top ones are a household management and a menu planning. So all those recipes, those scrap pieces of paper or cookbooks, put it all into one binder. You can just photocopy or tear the page out of the cookbook. No one will care. Consolidating it all in one place is going to save you space. It's going to keep you organized. And I'm telling you, the biggest mistake is not having a binder system for papers just like this. If you have no idea how to make a household management binder, I've done the work for you. I have a really cool PDF that has everything you could ever possibly need. And I'm going to put a link to that on my website. It has spots for your medical information, emergency information, all of your kids' school information and passwords, cleaning checklists, pet information. Anyways, it's, it's a tool that I promise you will just make you feel organized and prepared. So I'm going to put that link down below. The second biggest paper organizing mistake that honestly almost everyone does is keep paper for way too long. Mostly paper that's not important at all. So every time you have paper coming into your home, if you're filing it in your filing cabinet when you're done with it or just like shoving things here, there and everywhere, and you don't have a system, 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, you could have bank statements still from decades prior. You could have just insurance papers for cars you don't even own anymore. This is what I see with clients over and over again. It's just stacks and stacks of paper and filing cabinets filled with paper that is unnecessary to keep. So the hack to solve this is super simple. It's just giving yourself a short 
and a long-term filing system. It could be a basket, it doesn't have to be fancy. What we do in this house is every time paper comes into the home and once I've dealt with it, so I've paid the bill or it's a statement, I just toss it into short term. I don't file it, I don't sort it, I'm just throwing everything into short term. And then at tax time, then I go through and I pick out the important things that I wanna to transfer to long term. So contracts or yearly statements, and I shred the things that aren't important. At the time, I don't wanna sort. I don't wanna like have to think about every piece of paper that comes into my house. So just being able to have it go in a safe place that I can then one time a year, that's the only time I have to file my paperwork, one day a year. It just makes life easier and I'm not keeping the excess. That's the biggest thing. Like You are not going to be mixing in unimportant documents with important documents. And when you're right now just filing everything, which you might be doing, or mixing things together, when the important things aren't separated, everything feels important. Like that pile of paper could have really important things in there. So we declutter nothing and we keep everything because we're not sure. And when we have doubt, we keep it all. So here's what we do. We do short and long term. And I promise you this quick hack, you have to try it because it's going to eliminate years worth of useless paper clutter from your home. The third hugest paper organizing mistake is not having a designated spot for your receipts. Your purse does not count as a designated spot for receipts. You need to actually dedicate a home for them so they're not just bunched in your pockets or shoved in a drawer somewhere. Most of the time we don't need the receipts actually and 99% of the time they're trash. But what if, what if there's something like that shirt you wanna return? Having a place where you can just shove all the receipts in the meantime is actually really helpful. I just have a box right in our entranceway. You can have something in your car, wherever you naturally pile your receipts, give it a designated home, label it. And the trick is when it's bulging, that's when you go through and just purge it. Like the container concept, when it's full, it's time to go through and get rid of the things that don't matter. And I've seen a lot of people do this really cool thing, just using a Kleenex box because this is what you do, you can put this in your car, somewhere in your car, and the receipts just shove in, just like that. We don't have to keep them tidy, that's not what this is about. It, it's about not losing any important receipts and giving them a designated home. This is gonna stop that huge mistake of misplacing or just having way too many receipts. The fourth biggest organizing mistake when it comes to paper is not having a designated easy spot for sentimental stuff. What I mean by this, you might have like I do, it's all set up for your kids' memories and you have a place for that to go. But if you're anything like me, we're just not gonna take the time to always file like that. So when your kids come home with report cards or artwork, you need a place that's really quick and easy just to shove it in the meantime. I like having this really huge basket. So even if it's a newspaper clipping or, or an obituary, I don't know, a photo that you're like, oh, I really wanna keep this. We can just toss all of that in here in the meantime. And then one time a year, I take everything out of my big memory bin and I sort it into photos or into each kid or my own memory box. I take the time to really put it away nicely when I have the time. I dedicated time to do this. But it's okay if it's once a year or even once every two years. The point is to not mix this up with other paper, to have an actual spot that's really fast and easy for it to go. And here in my entranceway, I have it in the mudroom. It's just a basket on top that I just toss the papers in without thinking and it's not clutter. And I feel good because I know it's safe and it's protected and it's there for me when I have the time. And I'm telling you, you need a system just like this. The fifth and final biggest mistake when it comes to organizing paper is having it horizontal. And what I mean by this is piles. Piling isn't filing, friends. And those piles become like clutter blind to us. And over time, we just have mountains of paper and we have no idea what's in it. So a quick hack to stop this huge mistake is to just get yourself systems that Keep your paper vertical. So a file box like this that's clearly labeled, but my favorite is having a command center with some sort of paper organizing systems on the wall. 
These magazine racks are really inexpensive. Put them everywhere you naturally pile paper. I made them kind of pretty and pink. You just take a file folder and you can glue on any scrapbooking paper that you find that matches your decor, add a quick label, and now you're not gonna forget. You're not gonna forget about the paper, where it goes, things you have to do, things you have to pay, school papers coming in. Create a little command center just for your kids so it's really, really visual. Get that paper off your surfaces and on the wall because vertical is visual and horizontal is hidden. And anytime you can do this, you're gonna stop that huge paper organizing mistake, which is piling. Another quick thing that you can do to keep your papers really visual is use the side of your fridge. I love my kitchen command center on the side of my fridge. It's things like all my to-dos and my calendar and just my shopping list, all the paper that would normally be scrap pieces of paper on the counter or post-it notes everywhere. I've contained it. I've given it a limit and I've organized it with a command center. And honestly, I know I say this all the time, but if you don't have command centers in your home, you are missing out on an opportunity to really get your paper under control. Let me know in the comments below what your biggest paper struggle is. Is it sentimental? Is it kids artwork? Is it photos? I count that as paper clutter. Or is it just the random everything? Have you kept every statement for the past 10 years somewhere in your house? Let me know in the comments below. I really wanna like do a poll and see what the most common paper mistake is. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe already if you haven't because every week we have new organizing videos. I'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. Exciting news. We have a new addition to our family. This is Penelope. We call her Penny. And she is the sweetest, most brilliant puppy. And I can't wait. I'm just going to show you all the cool things about Penny so you can get to know her. Because she's probably going to be in a lot of videos coming up. Right? Yeah. As you guys know, Oscar passed away just over six weeks ago. And I didn't... I think I wanted to get another puppy and yet I missed having a dog so much. Obviously I miss Oscar, but I just, I am a dog person. And so I was online and I saw these puppies and I said it was Joe's birthday. We were just gonna go look. Who can look at puppies and not come home with a puppy? Um, I feel like Penny chose us. She was curled up on Izzy's lap and just like went to sleep and wouldn't leave her alone. And so we brought her home and Milo named her Penny and I am so happy. And I feel like she's really helping us get over and yeah, helping the grieving process. Just so grateful to have her. But I gotta tell you some really cool things about Penny. One, turns out, she's gonna be gigantic. So I didn't do research into Labradoodles. That's my bad. Her dad's a full-size poodle. Her mom is a full-size lab. Penny's 13 pounds at nine weeks. Penny's gonna be an 80 pound dog. That's gonna be something. But she's also so smart. I'm telling you, smartest puppy ever alive. We've been training her, I've been clicker training, and she already knows a ton of cool tricks. She can sit, she can shake a paw, and she can leave it. But the coolest thing about Penny is Penny is house trained from day one, from like second one. Penny rings the bell when she has to poop. I'm pretty sure she's a genius. I think she might be solving world peace in her sleep. She's definitely doing complex calculus in algebra because this dog is a genius. And I know everyone thinks they have the best dog ever. Penny is just very cool. One thing that she does that I really wanted to share with you is she pounces like a tiger or a lion. Emily says this is a lab thing, but when we throw a toy, she like sneaky creeps up on it, slow, and then pounces at the last moment, which is the most ad adorable thing I've ever seen. So far, it's only been four days, but I am just so happy. I feel like she's such a great decision and such a wonderful addition to our family, except for one tiny thing that I forgot. Babies don't sleep through the night and neither do puppies. She, it's, 
I'm tired. She's like a baby, but with razor blade teeth. And I'm not crate training her because I wanted her to sleep in my bed, but this is not working out. So great. So today will be the first day in a crate. <laughs> I love your comments. How you do it? How do you let a puppy cry? Do you just put her in the other room and hope and pray she stops? Or is there like some thing you do? I don't care if she cries. I know I just have to let her cry it out and she'll get over it and it's not gonna hurt her long term. It's probably good for her to learn to self-soothe, but I can't handle the crying. Like I get so emotional. I cry when she cries. I don't know what's wrong with me, but this is like, I'm struggling. I'm struggling with the bedtime with a puppy. So I'd love all of your comments and helpful tips in the comments. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you next time.